The Falcon Heavy has finally arrived. As you watch this video, a cherry red Tesla Roadster travels in space. And Starman, the mannequin sporting SpaceX sleek spacesuit, is in the driver's seat where it will sit for millions of years. And in a deeper sense, Starman serves as a metaphor to Elon Musk's path to greatness. We will get to all that in a minute because our journey starts in 2001 when everything began. Elon Musk was 30 years old. You see, Musk originally didn't set out to start an aerospace company. He merely wanted to get the public excited about space once again, namely excited about going to Mars, and he was willing to spend his own money to do so. So he came up with an idea called Mars Oasis which consisted of a small greenhouse that would be sent to and land on Mars. And with that, it would be the farthest that life has ever traveled. And the greenhouse would send a video feed back to Earth so that people could watch it grow. And by getting the public excited about going to Mars, Musk hoped that such a mission would eventually lead to additional NASA funding needed for a manned Mars mission. And Musk wanted to finance two missions in case the first one failed. And we have to keep in mind he was not a billionaire at this time, but he was willing to spend up to $30 million on these missions. But Musk ran into a big problem, and that was finding a rocket that could send a small greenhouse to Mars within his budget. And the cheapest US rocket at the time was $65 million, which was way too expensive. But Musk was determined to accomplish this meaningful mission. So he took a coach flight to Moscow to buy an intercontinental ballistic missile, which would be much cheaper than a US launch vehicle. Musk brought along Adio Resi, his best friend from college, and Jim Cantrell, who was a consultant and worked on various joint missile defense programs conducted between America and Russia in the past, and now is the co-founder of Vector Space Systems. Anyway, they set up meetings with various companies to include Cosmotros, a commercial aerospace company based out of Moscow. And all of the meetings were unsuccessful. The Russians did not take Musk seriously at all. And according to Cantrell, one of the chief designers spat on him and Musk because they thought they were full of it. And Musk returned without a rocket. And then in February 2002, Musk and his team went back to Moscow, this time with reinforcements in the name of Mike Griffin, who worked for InQtel, which is the venture capital arm of the CIA, and also worked for NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. And along with that, Musk also brought a briefcase full of cash on this trip to show that he was serious. And so again, they met with officials from Cosmotros in an old building in Moscow. Shots of vodka started to flow and Musk got a little buzzed and he started asking how much for a missile and a negotiation unfolded and abruptly ended when one of them looked at Musk and said, young boy, no. And then at that point, Musk stormed out of the meeting and his team followed and they went straight to the airport to return again empty handed. On the plane ride home, Cantrell sits with Griffin and Musk is sitting quietly in the row in front of them. And this part of the story is legendary and is where SpaceX actually began. The legend goes, Cantrell and Griffin ordered drinks, happy to be leaving Russia. And Cantrell noticed Musk is working on his laptop. And at some point during the flight home, Musk turns around with a spreadsheet he created and Musk says, Hey guys, I think we can build this rocket ourselves. And then upon the return, Musk read every book about rocket science he could get his hands on, including rocket propulsion elements, the fundamentals of astrodynamics, and aerothermodynamics of gas turbine and rocket propulsion. And then by May 2002, SpaceX was founded and the rest is history. All right, fast forward to today, I am so excited that the Falcon Heavy launched successfully. Look how smoothly the rocket lifts off from the historic launch pad 39A. What an incredible sight.
we are looking at 27 Merlin 1D engines all firing, generating 620 kilonewtons of thrust. This is the most powerful operational rocket in the world, with more than twice the payload capacity to low Earth orbit as the Delta IV Heavy at one third of the launch cost. And look here, SpaceX was able to land both of the side boosters simultaneously. Absolutely incredible. But the center core booster hit the Atlantic Ocean at about 300 miles per hour and about 320 feet away from the drone ship. But two out of three is very, very good for its first launch. So that is so cool. All right, so what is next for the Falcon Heavy? SpaceX will work towards qualification to launch classified payloads for the U.S. government, namely the U.S. Air Force. Qualification involves a technical evaluation by the Air Force, along with the review of the manufacturing and system engineering processes. Along with that, launch data from the Falcon Heavy missions will be analyzed to make sure that the launch vehicle performs as expected. And this may involve an evaluation of 2 to 14 launches before the vehicle is certified. The Falcon Heavy will have a test launch for the Air Force slated in June. The mission is called the Space Test Program 2, which will consist of launching a cluster of military and scientific research satellites to different orbits. But I'm a bit disappointed that it was reported that SpaceX will no longer be planning crewed missions for the Falcon Heavy. And I was really excited to see two space tourists orbit the moon. But the reason why SpaceX is scrapping crewed missions is so that they can focus their efforts on the big Falcon rocket. And that makes me happy because that's the true end game. Okay, so February 2018 is an incredible time for the Falcon Heavy to launch Starman and the Roadster into space. And so driving for the first time is a huge milestone for everyone and is the first step towards maturing into adulthood and represents freedom and the ability to venture out and explore. And in the United States, that starts at the age of 16. So Starman is the perfect metaphor, launched 16 years to the month after Elon Musk was called a boy and returned from Moscow empty-handed without a rocket. And he has matured from a guy who wanted to send a greenhouse to Mars to now wanting to make a Mars colony possible. So Musk has achieved what he set out to do in 2001 and the public is excited about space once again and we are excited to go to Mars because of SpaceX. So imagine what Elon Musk must feel to achieve this moment. He must feel redemption, sweet redemption. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like. And if you want to know how cool life will be like in the future, join the Neoscribe tribe and subscribe. I am Neoscribe. See you on our next journey.